Thank you for joining me for the Daily Bread Bible Study here for day 335, Monday, November 30th, 2020, focusing on 1 Corinthians chapters 10 through 13. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul invites the Corinthians to learn from Israel's history, namely the time of the 40 years of the wandering in the wilderness. The Apostle references the lack of support to Moses and the Israelites' self-indulgent acts of making the golden calf, reveling, sexual immorality, and complaints. Paul makes the point that pride comes before the fall. He doesn't use that language. That's our English language's idiom here. But instead, he proposes humble love of Jesus as a way to endure the captivation that can come due to sin. Now, it sounds like some Corinthians are participating in practices to false gods, which again Paul rejects. The apostle wants the focus to be on how members of the church impact one another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 23, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Do not seek your own advantage, but that of the other. Paul then mentions if an action would send the wrong message, then just don't do it. So moving on to chapter 11, in the same line of thought, Paul encourages people to be imitators of Christ. I infer that there is conflict around wearing head coverings, and the final conclusion in verse 16, which says we have no such customs, nor do the churches of God, seems to counteract the 10 plus verses Paul spends on this topic. There must have been something about wearing head coverings that was really controversial. So my guess is that Paul is describing his opinion of what should be done and wants the church to stop focusing on this divisive topic. Now, this uh, guess kind of fits well with the renewed emphasis on moving past divisions in order to build each other up. Now, Paul critiques their, practice, their practice of the Lord's Supper in which some consume all of the meal so that in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty one, one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? Paul has harsh words for those who disregard other members of the church, stating in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine, 29, For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. Remember, he's using the imagery of the body of Christ, so the idea is all those who eat and drink without considering other members, they judge themselves. So Paul's pastoral resolution is this in verse 33. My brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About all other things, I will give instructions when I come. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we have a more detailed imagination of what it means to be a member of the church and a discussion of the body of Christ. Paul then clarifies how the Holy Spirit works differently than other pagan traditions. And the blessing of the Holy Spirit is that the gifts are shared. It's not possessed by any one person, but they are shared. No one person becomes the center of power, which is contrary to the worship of Caesar and the hierarchy of the Roman government. Now, instead, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We, as Christians, work in coordination through the Holy Spirit for the sake of the body of Christ, which is the spiritual unity of all disciples in Jesus. When the Holy Spirit works through us, 
We function as God's hands and feet working in the world. God activates these gifts through God's purposes, and all members are needed. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 18, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The challenge and blessing of this is that it, this body of Christ imagery is that we are always connected and connected with one another. That means if there's somebody that you find difficult to get along with, you're still connected with them. You need to treat them equally as any member in the body of Christ. And if you celebrate your relation with another member, your relationship, the whole body of Christ benefits. I should also note, you don't have to like someone in order to show them the love of Christ. And so moving on to chapter 13, we get to explore what this love in Christ looks like, God's love for others, expressing what true love looks like within this body of Christ. This love is the centerpiece of being connected in the body of Christ. Like I said, Eve, you don't have to like somebody in order to participate in God's love within the community. And as the apostle reminds us in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 2, if I, ha if I have all faith as so to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. In words often spoken at Christian weddings, the Apostle Paul describes the love he sees in Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Regardless of your faith background, your interpretations of scripture, I hope you are inspired by the self-giving love of Jesus, especially as it's manifest here through the self-giving love of Paul and the early church. May you feel this love today, and may you find life-giving ways to share this type of love with the world. I look forward to discussing more in 1 Corinthians next time.